All right, we are following a developing story in Eastern Europe where there's major concerns over Russia's influence in the region. Bosnia remains a deeply divided country despite a decades old peace agreement that ended a brutal war in the Balkans. <laughs> the nation is split between a Bosnian Serb Republic and a Muslim Croat Federation. The Bosnian Serb police are expected to receive 2,500 new assault rifles next month, but there are fears Russia will train the officers and increase the risk of conflict. So here to take us through the latest is CBSN contributor Alex Clement. He writes for Signal, a newsletter uh, produced by G Zero Media that includes this story and really a list of other really fascinating global articles every week, the sort of stuff that doesn't necessarily make the headlines but is really interesting. Uh, you can sign up for that newsletter at g0media.com. Just head to the homepage and then click on subscribe to the newsletter. All right, Alex, thanks for being here. Um, there's always, like I said before, there are always stories on the newsletter that you know don't necessarily rise to the front page of many of our newspapers here. Sure. This is one of them. Tell me why this is on your radar. So it, it's a it's a sort of alarming example of how local ethnic tensions or rivalries, once they're overlaid with geopolitical tension, can actually become quite a dangerous problem. Right. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Bosnia today is divided. Uh, at the end of the civil war in the 1990s, it was divided into a Serb section and a uh, Bosnian and Croat section. Um, the Serb section has been getting increasingly nationalistic over the past few years, talking about potential uh, for an independence vote and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons that's happened is that, the, is that the, the government of Bosnia has talked about joining the EU and has talked about joining NATO, right? And Bosnian Serbs don't want to join NATO, right? Uh, there's, there's little love lost between Serbs and NATO. You mm -hmm. may remember in 1999, NATO bombed Serbia. So, th so from the Serb nationalist perspective, this is a, this is a red line. Um, the international aspect of it is this, is that Russia happens to agree with them, right? Russia also doesn't want another country uh, in East, the former Eastern Bloc to join NATO. Um, so the concern is, as these weapons pour into Bosnia, there are reports that Russian uh, officers will be training the local police in how to use them. Mm -hmm. And the bigger concern is, look, if Bosnia does want to join NATO and Russia doesn't want them to join NATO, will Russia use this local ethnic split to destabilize Bosnia in a way that makes it impossible for that to happen? And is there a risk of something like another civil war? Well, look, anytime you have you're pouring weapons into a situation where there's a history of ethnic conflict um, and this kind of outside power is potentially stoking the flames uh, it's a very dangerous situation I mean the the, the, Yugos, the horrific Yugoslav civil war never really ended it was more sort of frozen mm -hmm. um, and things like this can unfreeze that quickly and I think that's the concern particularly when you have more weapons pouring into the region yeah there was a lot of ugliness a lot of um, sort of civil rights violations I mean it was a it was a very brutal war um, How's the international community re reacting to this? Well, the U.S. has, um, ex U.S. Congress in particular, has expressed concern about uh, Russia's involvement in the region. Yeah. Um, I think the bigger issue is it, it's it's not clear that, that NATO or the U.S. are really going to be able to focus a whole lot of attention on this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are these bigger issues playing out. What is the U.S. relationship with NATO overall, right? Um, so I think it's, it's it's really three things that are, that are concerning. One is the local ethnic sac uh, kind of uh, uh, tension. Second is what is Russia doing or not doing, and thirdly. Is is anyone else paying attention? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a part of the world that spilled into a terrible civil war because no one was paying attention. Right, indeed. So, unfortunately, we don't have as much time as I would like to talk to you, but I want to no at problem. least hit up a couple of hard numbers. Let's do, it. Let's do two. Uh, 300. So, $300 billion is the cost that the UN says uh, will be the cost of rebuilding Syria after the civil war is over. Um, at the moment, there's been some interesting reporting that uh, Iranians and Russians are actually fighting to get those uh, reconstruction con uh, contracts. That's lucrative money. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, and people, uh, we know that countries want to stake their influence sure. in the Middle East. Uh, 2.6. 2.6. So the South Korean uh, government is paying 2.6 million dollars to cover the expenses of the North Korean athletes and cheerleaders. They didn't are, even pay. They didn't even pay their own way. Oh my God. They didn't even go Dutch on it. I mean, the, yeah, the, the, I was the, gonna the, say. So, so not uh, a great date. The question is whether it's money well spent, right? I mean, this was part of this kind of uh, goodwill gesture to yeah. bring the North and South together. You know, South Korean public isn't that thrilled about what's going on and you know North Korea I mean the guys Kim Jong-un still wants a nuclear ICBM none right. of that has changed so you know 2.6 million is not that much money but whether it's money well spent probably not yeah I don't know I don't know about that Alex Clement thank you so much thank you